Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make six different cards using six different inky techniques with one stamp. You can see the cards all have a very similar layout as they're finished, but the way we got to these different cards is all very different. You might not have all the supplies that I'm using today, but I'm sure you can substitute with what you have on hand. This video is brought to you by TopFlightStamps.com, and that's where I got this stamp from Darkroom Door. They bring all the cool stamps from all over the world back to us here in the United States. All the products will be linked up in the video description as well. We're going to begin by inking up our word block stamp with some VersaFine ink. That is a clear ink that is meant for embossing. Now I am going to dust my piece of cardstock with some cornstarch. That's going to keep it from uh, collecting stray bits of embossing powder when we go to do our resist. Now you just want to press firmly down on the stamp so you get a nice even impression and we're going to coat this with embossing powder. Now you can use any type of clear or white embossing powder you want. I happen to have a thicker, um, more chunky embossing powder here, so it's going to give me a little bit more of a grungy look. If you prefer a more um, defined, crisp look, go for a detail embossing powder. So a thick embossing powder has big chunks, and a detail embossing powder looks really like a fine powdery sand, and uh, they'll give you different effects. And you'll find embossing powders with different levels of coarseness to them, depending on the effect that you prefer. Then we're just going to heat this up with our heat tool to melt our embossing powder and here's where the fun starts. Now this is an ombre ink pad, also known as a rainbow ink pad. This one happens to be by Hero Arts and is pretty popular. So what I have here is a six inch wide brayer. I like a nice wide brayer because then I can cover it with one pass. So what I'm doing here is in, I'm inking up half of my brayer with um, the ink pad, then I'm turning it around and inking up the other half. You want to make sure that you get really good coverage, so that's why I keep rolling it over and over again. Then to get the ends, you just want to um, see what color you're next to. You can see on that green end, I'm just making sure I overlap the green and then go into the blue. That way you don't end up uh, cross-contaminating your ink pad, which is really easy to do with these rainbow pads. So then when you're inking up your panel, you want to go across in one direction, pick up, and go across again. So just make sure you keep going in the same direction and keep brayering over until you get a nice uniform layer of ink. And you may want to re-ink and do it again. Or something else you can do is actually use your blending foams and or blending brushes, whatever you like to do blending with, and you can go right over over what you've already done. I find that a brayer gives me a un more uniform um, uh, uniform blend, especially if I'm using glossy cardstock, but on regular cardstock like this, sometimes I get a better result with a foam. If you don't have a brayer, just go right in with your blending foams and you're going to get just about the same result. It can be difficult to get your blending foams in the rainbow ink pads, especially that center color, so I recommend using some mini ink pads as well. These prism inks are really nice. They remind me of distress inks because they're reactive with water, they're really juicy, and they blend really well. So if you weren't happy with what you did with a brayer, go in with some other inks that you find um, to be really reliable. And also, if you don't have a rainbow ink pad, you can use mini ink pads like these prism inks or your dew drops or your distress mini cubes, whatever you have, and you can ink up your brayer that way. Just try not to cross-contaminate your colors and you're going to be fine. The nice thing about these little prism inks is they are water reactive, so if I flick some water on that, it will give me a nice effect. And I tested the Hero Arts pads and they didn't really give me much of a reaction when I went in with the water on them. So I just thought it'd be fun to kind of give it that little bit of, um, of quality on this piece too. And now I just flicked on some water and uh, to give it that cool kind of distressed speckly background and blotted it up with a tissue. I love that you can get this effect with a brayer or with sponges or with both depending on the intensity of your color. You can always add more ink when you do a resist like this because your letters are going to stay nice and bright. I just really like the way that looks and that will go on one of our cards in a little bit. This next technique starts off the same as the other one. We're going to ink up our stamp with VersaFine Clear Embossing ink, or Versa Mark, I should say, and then we're just going to stamp this down on another piece of plain white cardstock. But this time, we're going to use chalks to color it. You can use any sort of chalk pastels you have, or even eyeshadow. These are Jane Davenport chalk pastels here, palette pastels are called, and I'm using some of her applicators to apply the uh, chalk specifically to different words on the word block image 
package here. Now you could use Q-tips, you could use small pom-poms, you could even use cotton balls. It's completely up to you. You could even use your foam blenders, but they're a little bit larger and I like to be able to specifically highlight different colors with different colors of pastel. When you're done, simply rub it with a tissue and that's gonna press it into the clear ink and that ink is gonna lock it down so you don't need to seal it with anything else. And now I'm just using the sponge applicator to draw a little frame around my word block for a little uh, kind of fun graffiti looking edge. And since I'm pressing it into the paper, it will be fine without adding any fixative to it. But of course you could if you wanted to. I love how when you wipe off the pastel, you get this little bit of a ghosting on the cardstock and I think it looks really pretty. And there's another background we will use in a card in a few minutes. For this next technique, we're going back to the brayer and we are going to ink up with this pretty sunset colored ink pad. And remember, turn it around so you're overlapping your colors and try not to let your ink get contaminated. It's also good to note that when you have these rainbow ink pads, you wanna store them flat so all the color doesn't run down to one end of the pad. So keep that in mind. Now you're gonna load up your stamp by just rolling the brayer in the same direction multiple times over the stamp. Now I notice I missed a Spot on this stamp. I didn't press my brayer firmly enough and it's apparent as I stamp it here. But this technique is really good if you're doing a photorealistic stamp or a stamp that's got a lot of tiny little dots making up its pattern because it will give you a good impression with no ink globs. And um, while I have that brayer covered with ink, I didn't want to waste it, so I grabbed a piece of glossy cardstock, and you can use photo paper for this too, it'll fine. And I just brayered all that ink off onto that cardstock so that I would have a cool background for a card that we're gonna make a little bit later. So don't waste that ink. You can still get an ombre look on your stamps without having a brayer. All you need is three different colors of ink pads. So here I am using some teal and a couple shades of plum and purple. These are the prism ink pads and I am just kind of um, inking them up in lines basically and letting them overlap at the edges. Now try to keep colors that are fairly close to each other so that you don't contaminate your ink pads but this is a fantastic way to get a multicolored image without having any fancy tools. And here you can see the look that we're gonna get from this one. One. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to get spatter effects with your reactive ink. So first I spattered this word block after I stamped it, but I wasn't impressed with the level of distress that I got. But I realized that once I inked over that, I would get some darker patches wherever the paper was damp from my previous spatters. I thought that was kind of a nice way to give you some darker inks, and then you've got your stamping inks, then you've got your blended inks, and then you can have another layer of distress on top of that by splattering on your water, and then you get the whiter drops and I think that's a really nice effect it's very grungy and very fun Remember that waste paper that we made when we cleaned off our brayer a few minutes ago? Well, that makes a great background. Here I'm inking up this word block stamp again with black memento ink. You can use any black dye-based ink you have because we are stamping on cardstock, on a glossy cardstock, so you want to make sure it's dye-based ink or it might not dry. My background is completely dry. It does take longer on glossy cardstock, just to let you know, let that background dry really well, and then you're just going to stamp it straight down. And you're going to have a gorgeous uh, contrast between the solid black images and your beautiful ombre background. This next technique is really fun and it does yield a subtle effect. You can use Versamark for this, but I do prefer the clear resist ink because it dries a little bit quicker. So if you're using Versamark, be prepared to use your heat tool or um, to let it dry really well. Now I'm using glossy cardstock and you want to use glossy cardstock versus photo paper. It needs to be the cardstock. Um, I'm using Chrome Coat, but I've also used Judykins and the Stampin' Up! Glossy Cardstock, and they've both worked really well. And again, you're gonna ink up your brayer and get a nice uh, ombre inking across the entire brayer, and you're going to roll over your cardstock. Just like I did um, when we did our first uh, resist with the embossing ink, you're gonna keep going in the same direction. Don't go back and forth. You wanna lift up, bring it to the beginning, and roll over it again. If your color is not dark enough, you wanna re-ink your brayer and apply another coat. Again, same direction. Try not to go back and forth or um, contaminate your colors at all. And it will look really splotchy and yucky at first. You just keep rolling over it until you get a nice uniform result. 
After you're all set, you can dry the ink um, or you can set it aside to dry completely. It depends on your level of uh, patience. Glossy cardstock takes longer to dry. And then you wanna take a tissue, and I recommend a tissue and not a um, paper towel because you don't wanna scratch the cardstock, and just gently polish the top. And what's gonna happen there is it's just gonna take the excess ink off of your words. And that just gives you a very soft, um, muted rainbow effect. So it's a great way to use your brayer and it's just a really, um, just a really smooth, beautiful look. Now we get to the fun part. We get to make all of these backgrounds into cards. I'm going to start off by trimming down all of my word blocks so that I have focal panels for my cards. Then I'm going to take some of the images that I just stamped and trim out some of the sentiments so I have those as accent pieces for my cards. Then I looked in my paper stash to find some pink, orange, and golden papers that I thought would look really nice with all the stamping and inking that I did. Sometimes it's a good idea to pick your papers first just in case you have a hard time finding things to match, but I liked out pretty well this time. Making the cards was pretty similar. I would basically find a panel to cover my card base, and I did top fold A2 cards, so they're five and a half by four and a quarter, so I cut my paper the long way, my regular cardstock the long way, and then I folded it in half. So I layered up some scraps and some sentiments and some patterned paper, added some eyelets for embellishment, and just glued that panel down. Now I like to do my eyelets before I add it to the card base so I don't have the um, inside of the card messy, but it really doesn't matter if you want to put them on afterwards. You just see the back of the eyelets inside, so that's up to you. And then I just trimmed off excess. I love some of the scraps that came from um, trimming down my focal point inked images, so I tried to use those on cards whenever I could. And uh, there you can see our first one, and this one is completely flat and easy to mail. Now, if you want to step it up a notch, try inking the edges of your panels. This time I'm doing about the same thing. Can you believe that ombre paper is like a perfect match for these cards? But I am inking the edges with my small black ink pad. These tiny ink pads are so good for this. And I'm also doing the word block stamp. And I thought this would look great because I stamped all the letters in black. So having that little black edge just adds a lot, I think, for this simple card. Now, another way you can kick it up is by adding a little dimension. So every panel here, I am doing the black inking, that's going to give it some dimension, but I'm also adding some foam squares to the back of some of these focal uh, sentiments. So the big thank you is getting foam squares on the back, and yes, it's my classic yellow foam squares that are never ending. If you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know what I'm talking about. And then the next one I'm gonna do flat. So that one's gonna go right up against the um, the other layers. And then the third sentiment is gonna be raised, popped up, and overlapping that second one. So having some things overlapping, I think adds a lot of dimension and just looks really cool. For this card, I was inspired by the white and gold foiled paper that I had chosen for one of my cards. I decided to trim it so that I would have half a gold stripe at the top and the bottom, so I'd just have a little bit extra sparkle on the card, and I layered down one of the ombre backgrounds there that had the speckles on it. I thought that was so pretty. And then I used those gold scraps to mount on the sentiments. Sorry about the glare, it's super shiny because <laughs> it's a gold foil paper. And I also did some on this, uh, there was like a tear off strip on the paper, but I thought it was so pretty that I decided to use it as part of my, um, my layout. So always look at those little tear off strips on your paper. Sometimes they're just the, a little spark of pattern that will work out really well. I use foam squares on the Dunka Shane, the, the center thank you sentiment, just to give it a little bit of interest. And I'm also embellishing with some little gold eyelets here on this bottom strip. Now I will need to uh, glue that down with some double sided tape because like I mentioned, I'm just having the eyelets on that strip so that it doesn't poke into the middle of the card because I already glued down my backing paper. Uh, so just kind of, um, just make sure it's stuck down good and you're going to be all set. And that's how I made that card. I think it's pretty elegant and also really summery and fun because we've got that pink to orange um, gradient there. So just a really, really fun thank you card. Now I wanted to show you the uh, cool themed cards that I made because the uh, the steps were pretty much the same. I thought I wouldn't do a tutorial for each one of them and just kind of flip through them. And I just think it's a wonderful little batch of cards to have on hand because it's always nice to have a handmade thank you card. I want to thank you for watching today. Please check out our sponsor, topflightstamps.com. If you want any of the supplies I use today, I'll have everything linked down below. Thanks again for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.